Hello, Frank Whitmer here from Verity Precision to talk to you about the Honeywell Optimizer Unitary VAV controllers and the Silk devices and how you would configure them within the IRM tool. So first we'll go through some of the Silk devices that are available uh, now and in, and in the future. We'll go over that as well. Um, but the uh, first category we have here are the Silk wall modules. And the Silk wall modules consist of the TR120, which is the newest of the wall modules for Silk. And then you have TR75, TR71, the 42, all the way down to the 40. And as you can see here, with different features, whether it's just temperature sensor, then also with humidity and also with CO2. And you get to pick which flavor you'd like to, uh, to use with your controllers. Then there's also the uh, Silk actuators that are available to be used on the Silk bus on the Optimizer Unitarian and VAV controllers. And then we also have the enthalpy sensors, which are a temperature and humidity sensor that uh, goes on the Silk bus as well. And we'll go and set up uh, one of each of these and, and show how we would configure them within the uh, IRM tool in the controllers. Uh, Recently, they've added the Honeywell has added the Silk device uh, IAQ sensor, the TR50. Uh, the TR50 has uh, two different models, and then they come with a display and without a display as well. And as you can see here, they are Silk, and they can also be backed then MSTP or Modbus RTU as well. Um, and then to be released at some point this week, this year. We have the TR100 series of wall modules, which Honeywell had uh, rolled out at the uh, Honeywell Partner Summit in, uh, in March down in New Orleans. And I've added them on here, too, just to show uh, what they're going to be and, and how we would connect with them. Similar to the TR50, they're Silk Bus. They can be Mob Bus or Backnet as well. Um, and then they can be powered by the Silk Bus, or they can have a separate power source to them, which will then allow for more devices on the Silk bus. If we move over to the software side in the IRM tool, uh, in that uh, IRM tool palette, you're gonna find that there is a category called Silk, and under, this, under the Silk, you're gonna find Silk devices and also Silk parameters. Silk devices are gonna be where you select which type of uh, Silk device you wanna drop on your network and use within your controller. And then the parameters, uh, the Silk parameters, is the part where you're going to be adding each item to it uh, to be able to display the values, to be able to send point values to the displays and to uh, set them up to be set points or, or uh, you know, command points or to just view the points from there. And then within that tool, there's a few or a couple of uh, silk views uh, that are available. These come in handy um, as you're building your application. You may have multiple parameters that you want to use, and it's hard to go back and figure out where you put them within your application in the in the different folders. Uh, so the first one is the silk parameter summary view, which will then give you a list of all the silk parameters that are being used and which folder they exist in to be able to find them after the fact or have other people come in behind you and be able to see where they are. <clears throat> then you have the Silk Device Summary, which will give you a summary of all the Silk devices that were added into the application as well. And then from there you have, as actions, you can ping a Silk device and that'll check for connected devices and the statuses of them. And then the Validate Silk Device is a, an important one that you want to run uh, before you do any downloading, it'll tell you whether you've configured the device correctly and also to verify that you didn't uh, exceed any limitations on what can be on that Silk bus. So from there, we'll just go ahead over to our, we'll go right into the workbench view. And if we get over there, and what I have here today is a, um, an optimizer unitary controller that we're going to work with. So first we'll go in. We're just going to drop things in the periodic program. It's a blank application, nothing there. So all we're going to do is add a uh, couple of uh, uh, Silk devices. If under, under Silk and Silk devices in our Honeywell IRM control palette, first I'll do is I'm going to drop in there a C7400S, the uh, enthalpy sensor. And just to show you what's available in there, if we double click, you're going to find that there is a uh, silk config data section. And when you go down there, 
you pick what the address is that you want to use uh, for the device. And this is a simple device, so that's all there is for, for that device. Uh, then from there, if we look at our silk parameters, we can then go in here and find a temperature one. So we'll use room temp, and I'm just going to call this return air temp. And I'll just expand that out. If we go in and look at that. We can go in there and look at that point. And from there, we can see that there's a fault in here, and it's because there's no device associated with the parameter. So what you have to do when you drop a device in there or a silk device in, you got to make sure you choose what device it is you want to connect to. In this case, we just have the 7400. So we've got that in there. We'll go back to our back to our main wire sheet. And then we'll drop in, let's see, we'll use humidity since it's an enthalpy sensor. We get to do temperature and humidity. So I'm just going to say D-A-H-U-M-I-D. We'll go in here. And same thing, we'll go in here and tell it that it is on the C7400S. So from here, these would be the two objects you would use to then link to a backnet point to be able to expose the, the values and also to add um, links to other parts of your application. If we move on and we look at a TR70 series, and we're just going to drop a TR71 on here. Expand that out a bit. Take a look. TR71 configuration, you're going to notice some similarities to what you had with your... Um, Spider Classics and the uh, wall modules and configuring them within the uh, Spider tool. But if we go in here, first part would be your home screen. We'll take a look at that. And with that home screen, you get the option of whether you want to just display one value or you want to display multiple values on the screen. And you can have up to three values. So for now, we'll just say single. And then you'll see here there's places that you can put words in for the uh, points that you want to display on that. It would be actually parameters that you want to display on this uh, wall module. Uh, then you can go in and you can select what you want on the screen, similar to the selection you get when you're configuring it for the Spider Classics. Then if we go in, you can set a password if you want to have a password. We can go in and look at categories and parameters. Right now there aren't any categories, but I'll show those as we add the different uh, uh, parameters in there. Let's go back. Let's save that. So now we'll say, okay, let's go back to our silk parameters. What we're going to do is we'll add our temperature sensor. And we will, you can have a maximum of eight characters. So I'm going to rename that and we're going to just call it room, room temp. Go inside here. Let's set it all up. I'm going to leave this blank for a second. You'll see why in a minute. Um, category. I want a category. This is a temperature, so we're going to say sensors will be the category on the display. We want tenants to be able to read the value as well as contractor. And then you have the ability to go in for the configuration where you can set up your different pieces of, you know, of what you want to have visible on the screen. We'll say save that. And then... If we come back to our main program, you'll see that there's no silk device chosen like there is over here. So what we can do is there's an action on the silk device itself called attach on assigned parameters. So now if I click on this, any parameters we added uh, from the silk parameters that don't have any uh, device assigned to them, this will automatically assign it to this one device. So if I just do that, you'll see a change to TR71. So it's now associated with this. So now this value can then be linked to other parts of your program to be able to read the, the space temperature. Once we finish with all this, we're going to go through here and we can go in and say validate our silk device. And we'll let it go through and it did come up and says failed. So now we can go in here and read what the failure is. And we can say, oh, okay, what do we have? We didn't assign a parameter to display on the screen. Uh, we're missing a label on the home screen. So what we'll do now is go back, take a look at that, go back into TR71. Here's our home screen. Uh, let's see, we didn't give it a label. So we're just going to say room 101. Oh, we need that 
we need to display the temperature there. So if we go back over here, easy enough, copy the, the block, which will copy the ord. We go back in here, we'll do a paste, and you'll see it goes in as an ord. When we do the save, it turns around and makes it a handle value instead. So if you're not sure what it is when you look at this, you click on the arrow head and it takes you back to that where it's connected to. So it's going to display room temp. So we have those pieces fixed. So we can go back here and say validate silk device. And okay, I got my pop up on my other screen and it did validate successfully. So now once that happens, we can turn around and go back to our application. This is the first time downloading to this controller. So I'm just going to go in and tell it to do a full teach and then it will send the, the application down to the controller and then the displays will start displaying the values. Now you'll see in here there are many others and um, if you wanted to add points to your like a TR-71 like you used to do in the Spider Classic you can go in there and add other points to display on there. So those are the same icons that you had when you did the configuration on your TR-70 series um, configuration screen in the Spider tool. Uh, which would be these type of screen uh, uh, parameters that you would add. And we could drop them on there as well. Uh, let's take a look and see where our job is. Okay, it did download. So we do have a successful download on that controller. And you notice that by the uh, yellow triangles have gone away. And we are just waiting now to see the temperatures come up. Now it's saying download uh, application on the displays, which now we're waiting for the uh, displays to update. And there you can see I don't have a C7400, but I have my TR71. And there's the temperature coming through. So from here, we could turn around and I could take a, uh, say we go in and grab a, a backnet point. So we can turn around and come down here, backnet objects. And we can say, okay, let's do a, Numeric output, I'll put this out here, and I'm going to call this room temp 101. And say OK. So now we have that point. I can turn around and link it here. And now that we have the value there, and you'll see that I have it set for immediate, so it's going to download directly right away, and it did do it there. So if I go back now to my points on this controller, go back to points, I can do a discover, and there's my room temperature. I bring that in, and oh, because it's a writable point, it came in as uh, not enabled. Once we enable it, you'll see there's our temperature, and it's coming through from the... Uh, from the parameter. So that's just a, uh, a quick overview of the um, Silk devices and how to configure them within the uh, IRM tool for your optimizer unitary and your VAV controllers. Um, we'll have more on this later. Um, for now, thank you and uh, see you soon.